Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III and today I'm doing a paid review for Murillo. Murillo, hello. Hi Archie, your channel is great man. You are a very funny guy. I'm facing a big dilemma on my watch collection. First, I will tell you what my watches are. My modest collection is number one. 2007 Rolex Daytona 116520 stainless steel black dial. Number two, 2002 Rolex Submariner two-tone 16613 blue dial, the bluesy two-tone sub. Wow. Number three, 1989 Rolex Submariner date 16610 stainless steel. Number four, 2013 Jaeger LeCoultre Reverso Grand Tourley Stainless Steel. Number 5, 2007 Jaeger LeCoultre Master Compressor Geographic. Number 6, 2010 Breitling ne Old Navy Timer Stainless Steel Reference A13022. Number 7, a 1969 Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon with the 861 movement. Number 8, a 1959 Omega Constellation Pie Pan Rose Gold. Number 9, a 1964 Pie Pan Constellation Yellow Gold. I would like to hear your opinion about my collection. My real dilemma is that I'm thinking about buying a Rolex 2008 Explorer 2 with white dial. I found one in mint condition with box and papers. The guy can trade it for my Jaeger LeCoultre Master Compressor Geographic. Do you think it's a good deal? The Jaeger LeCoultre is an outstanding watch, but I really think it is too uh, resistant in a daily use. But I would love to hear your opinion. What items do you think I need to change? What items to add? Thank you in advance. And uh, my friend here also uh, came back to me and uh, he asked me whether he should swap his Omega Speedmaster 1969 for the Explorer 2. And I said, stop! 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 Those vintage Speedmasters, the man on the moon, they are so, they're going to be super collectible, especially with the different back. I think the 1969 one has a different back to the current one. Very, very valuable fucker. I wouldn't be swapping it for a modern Explorer 2. I love the Explorer 2, but I wouldn't be swapping it. Now, let's have a look at your collection. Fuck me dead. Fuck me dead. You got a really nice, nice collection of watches there. Really nice collection. And my advice to you is... Let's just go through them firstly and see what could possibly be traded or swapped or whatever. Rolex Daytona, steel, ooh, black dial, beautiful, beautiful. Two-tone bluesy, steel date sub, beautiful. Jaeger LeCoultre Reverso Grand Tourley, beautiful, don't sell. Jaeger LeCoultre Master Compressor, Geographic. I wouldn't be selling that either. You got the Breitling Navi old Navi timer, beautiful. The vintage Amiga. You got a nice couple of Amigas there. Look, my advice to you is, <clears throat> my advice to you. I wouldn't be selling nothing. Don't trade or swap. Collections grow. You grow a collection over time. You don't just trade pieces because. These dealers will stiff you. They're not your friends, okay? Watch dealers will stiff you, and uh, you're going to regret this. I can tell you this now. It's a big, big, big mistake to get rid of that um, Speedmaster. You don't realize it, but 1969 with the moon landing, that was the important year. So uh, I, I, I would not... I would not be getting rid of that watch. That uh, sounds like a great watch. Uh, my advice to you would be to just... You've got a great collection. You've got some beautiful things there. Yes, it'd be nice to add a GMT function watch, but slow down. Slow down. If you're going to get rid of anything, I'd be getting rid of the Submariner Date, the 16610, because you've already got the bluesy. Get rid of it. 
and get a GMT or a Explorer 2. That's what I'd be doing. I wouldn't really be getting rid of the Omega or the Jaguar, any Jaguar Cultures there. So my advice, you've got a lovely collection there. It's nice and well bounded. You've got a lot of nice pieces. Sometimes I, I think the problem is you just get bored. I know I, I find this myself. You just get bored with your collection and you think, oh, you want to add some spice to it. You think you do, but you're going to regret it. You're going to get seller's remorse. It's just not a, not the way to do things. My advice to you, you've got a beautiful, some vintage pieces, nice Rolex. You've got a couple Rolexes, a couple Jager LeCultures, a couple Omegas. Fuck, and a Breitling. Fuck, that is a nice, nice collection. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be swapping anything. The only thing I'd swap is possibly the Submariner because you've got two Submariners. You've got a two-tone and you've got a steel. But other than that, I, I'd be hanging on to it. I reckon that's a lovely collection. It's a nice collection and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in a hurry to get an Explorer 2. Okay, that's my advice. I wouldn't be in a hurry. But um, lovely collection, nice pieces and uh, enjoy them. Thank you very much. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we do in the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get the pre-owned watch, it's like if you're getting a brand new unit. The only difference is the money.